I, I wanted to make a quick video about why I think Egan Bernal is going to win the Giro. Now, obviously, normally I predict these things before the race, but I didn't really know how it was all going to pan out. So I decided that actually, let's go do a video now. So Egan Bernal won his first Grand Tour stage yesterday, stage nine of the Giro d'Italia, up to Campo Felice on some gravel tracks. And he released his power data from that day and also some previous days. So I just want to go through that as well as the upcoming stages in order to I guess put my point across of why I think he's going to win the Giro. So first of all, we're going to go back uh, to a recent stage, which was when Gino made a one on stage six. So it finished. Uh, here's the power file here. So this is the stage. Um, you may remember it where Gano whacked it in the crosswinds. This was up this particular climb here, uh, 5.8 watts per kilo for nine minutes. It was a pretty tough stage all round. 290 normalized for Bernal, which is pretty hard. Um, but this was the final climb here. So. Nothing too crazy. The first, most people said mountaintop finish. I mean, for me, 6K at 15, well, 15K at 6% is is hard for sure. But for these guys, it's not crazy hard just because of the speed involved. So if we look at the speed involved here, 25K an hour, it's quite a good sit on that. So it's hard to make a gap. But Ineos went from the front and drilled it really, really hard. Um, and Bernal managed to get a bit of separation, couldn't catch the break, but he wasn't too far away. So. The key part to watch is basically the last part. So the first part was really, really quick. You can see here, sort of 28, 30 k an hour, hit 40k an hour at one point. But the key point is, is this here. So the last 12 minutes were done at 6.4 watts per kilo, which is really where Danny Martinez went on the attack early on. They chased, but now then attacked across. Um, but the thing you've really got to watch here, he's just following wheels, following wheels. But the, the thing we've got to watch is sort of last four or five minutes of the stage. Um, and here he does like seven watts per kilo. I think if I get the, the point exactly perfect, it's a little bit more, um, actually, sorry, hang on a minute. Yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go. So uh, he does about 7.3 watts per kilo for five minutes. So he launches the big attack up to 750 watts and really starts drilling it super, super hard um, in order to basically whittle it down. The only people who could follow were Dan Martin, Remco, was it Blasov? I think it was Blasov as well. So everyone else was just binned. Uh, which is fair enough. Then he sort of set a decent tempo here. You can see in between, he's sort of doing three, 400 watts here. And then the last kick to the line was also strong, um, 616 watts for 25 seconds. And it was a tough day out, but I wouldn't say it was the hardest day out, but he still looked really good. Um, and I think that was, showed for me, there's more to come from the man. Um, some of his training data has been really, really good. I posted on Twitter a little bit about you know some of the numbers I've seen, but we're gonna look at yesterday's stage, which was uh, stage, 11, I believe. No, nine, sorry, nine. So here we go up to Campo Felice. Uh, and this, I think, was really, really shows how good he is. So overall, 290 normalized uh, for four hours. Pretty strong day out. It says his threshold 370 at 58, which is naughty. Um, I think I put his weight as 58 because I think people say he's 60, but I think he's a little bit, a little bit skinnier than that. Um, but we're going to look at this stage because this was hard. I'm not sure if you watched it from kilometer zero. 10 out of 10 would, would recommend. Um, but the break basically didn't go. So you can see for the first 20 minutes of stage, five and a half watts per kilo, which okay, for him is like tempo, not really threshold at all, but it's hard. And then this one again, 5.6. Again, it's just sapping the legs. This this climb again, a little bit easier, only five watts per kilo, um, but still a lot of spikes you can see here, a lot of sort of chaos. Um, the descents weren't easy either. This was the only one ridden pretty steady, like, you know, 4.4 for these lads is zone two, like real, not, not hard at all. This climb again, ridden at five watts per kilo, um, but the last part was a little bit more like 5.2-ish, which again is hard. It's just, you know, getting the kilojoules up. It's just sapping the legs because, you know, if you're burning, let's say 1100 kilojoules an hour, which he is, you can't replace that glycogen. Like, so obviously he's not burning 100% glycogen, but let's say he was burning maybe even 80%, like, that would be 800 kilojoules is coming from, let's say, glycogen. So he's got to replace 800 kilojoules. It's like, you can do max 120 grams an hour. So times four, because that's how many calories you get, then that's gonna be 480. So you can see it just, it takes away the, the, the glycogen. So the fitter you are, the higher percentage you're gonna burn as fat, which means you'll have to spare more glycogen for the finale, which is obviously important because when you're doing the big efforts that he did to distance people on Campo Felice in the last four, four minutes, that's why you need your glycogen stores. And that's why you think, why don't they just have a four minute max effort? Well, if they had a four minute max effort from the gun, everyone's pretty similar. But the point is, is that if you're a little bit fitter over every single climb, then you just spare more glycogen, you're just a bit better, like you're not as fatigued. And then when it comes to the final, you can actually make a really big difference. Um, and you know, it's, that is why 
I think Bernal is, in my opinion, so good because his threshold is probably higher than most people's. Um, and he's used to these long stages. His train's so hard. Obviously, I don't know what Remco does because he doesn't post on Strava. But we look at the final climb. It was ridden about 6.2 watts per kilo. It wasn't super steep. This thing here is the tunnel. Um, so it's slightly sort of ruined here. But, you know, he was doing 5.8, 6 watts per kilo probably on the wheel, um, which is hard. Like, you know, it's a hard tempo, especially at the end of the stage. If we look how many kilojoules it was, like 3,500. But... As you all know, the key part was this gravel section here. So this was the last four minutes 40. So they came out of the tunnel here onto the roundabout. And then basically from where my mouse is now to the final was all gravel. Um, it wasn't crazy steep, but Moscon went on the front and set a real good tempo and basically discouraged anyone that attacks. They were chasing down Bouchard and uh, Kum Bowman up the road. Sorry, I couldn't pronounce his name. Uh, but the key point was this, this the pinches towards the end. So. But um, Vlasov attacked first, um, and then Bernal countered. You can see this small thing, he, he attacked here, got a little gap, then put it in the big dog, and then launched it up this climb. So we look on the left here, you can see for a minute he did 547 watts, which is 9.4 watts per kilo, which is pretty strong. Um, it's not thermonuclear ridiculous, and then for two minutes he did 470, and this was basically his main attack, and that is how he, um, he managed to get away. Uh, from everyone else from Ciccone and this little bit here is 500 watts for like a minute and a nine seconds afterwards and And this is the reason why I think he's gonna win because he distanced Remco on this and I think this finish Okay, I don't think it suits Remco great as I said yesterday But I don't think it suits Bernal either that much like is you know It's a punchy finish, but it's not altitude. It's only like 1400 meters, which is not much and this is at the end of the hard stage and Remco seemed to get distance while we think on the e slightly easier stage It wasn't quite as long Okay, this climb was ridden hard at like five, but it wasn't the same. This bit here over the top, you know, 290 normalized for an hour is like decent, but they had this long recovery time here, like 240 normalized is pretty chill for these boys before, and then but, uh, and Remco managed to stay. Now, if we look what's gonna happen in the Giro in the future, um, you know, we obviously have Montalcino stage, which I haven't brought up here, but Montalcino stage, a lot of gravel. Bernal's really good on gravel. Strada Bianchi finished third behind Van der Poel and Alaphilippe. So I think with Moscon as well and Narvaez, who are very good at spring classics, he's going to have a really strong squad, as well as Gannett, to be fair. So I think in that sense, he's definitely going to gain time. But if we look at some of these other ones, we've got Montazonkalan, which I think, again, does Remco like the steep stuff? I'm not so sure. Obviously, he did very well in... Uh, Classic of San Sebastian, which he attacked up the final climb, the Jesbag, oh, I can't pronounce it, the Jebag or something. Anyway, sorry about the pronunciation, but it's a steep climb and then obviously solo to the finish. But here, I mean, it goes up to 1729, bit of altitude. And I think this this stage probably doesn't suit Bernal too much, but I think, still think on the steep stuff, he's he's good. Um, but these stages are where like Bernal's just going to destroy people because you know, it's consistently hard all day and it goes up to 2,000 meters three times. And that really is where if you're not used to the altitude, then it's re really gonna suffer. And I think that's why I think Bernal in the last couple of weeks, the stages are suiting him more and more. He's already got a buffer. Okay, there's the final TT, but I still think in the last week, the difference in the TTs is never the same. Like, you know, he lost like maybe 20 seconds, 15 seconds to Remco in the first TT over 10K. So you're like extrapolate that for 30K. Maybe he's losing a minute or something, but even if he's losing a minute, which I don't think he will because it's the end, people's form tends to go together. Like if Bernal's going really well, Remco's not as well, then their TT is gonna get closer. But even if it's a minute, like over here, he could put big, big time. And it's day after day. If we look when these stages are, this is uh, stage 16, this is stage 19, and this is stage 20. Stage 19, again, goes up to 1534, but this is like 9.4K at 9%. This is 15K at 6.5%. And, and Quickstep have a strong team, James Knox and Fausto Masnada, Peter Seri, and Jao Almeida, but it's not the same as Ineos. Okay, they've lost Sivakov, but Narvaez, Martinez, Moscon, people, Ganna, Pucho, all pretty strong. Uh, but I think this stage here as well really suits him. He goes up to 2,000 meters again two times. Super long climbs, 24K at 6%, 8.9K at 7%, and then this one again, uh, 7K at 8% up to Albert Motta. And I think when we think about all these stages put together, I think it really suits Bernal a lot. And he's already shown he's got good form. And I think the Monta Montalcino stage could be a, a destruction. Like Vlasov, he's going to bin on that stage, people like that. So based on those numbers that we've seen him do, um, but also just based on like the fact that the altitude suits him more and more. The only, the only thing is basically his back. If his back stays up, I can't see how he's going to lose it, to be honest, really. Um, because 
Remco is good, but third week. Bernal's done it before twice. He's done two to four Tour de France's. Remember in 2018 how strong he was in that final week, helping Chris Room when he was getting dropped, binning Roglic and stuff, and when G was up the road and he was helping Froome get back. Then obviously last year, the 2019 when he did it, he was super, super strong, um, just binning everyone up the final climb up the Col de, de, Col de Zeran. Um, the only person who can stay with him is Simon Yates, um, which this year, I don't know what's going to happen to him. But overall, that's my conclusion. Seeing some power there, seeing some stages that are coming up. Egan Bernal, I think, is going to win the Giro d'Italia 2021. It's a bold claim, but let me know your thoughts. Have you seen anything from any other contenders that makes you think they're going to do well or not well? Is Remco just hiding it? Is Remco just going to go beast mode on one of these stages, attack from 100k out and just bin everyone by four minutes? Because... With that boy, you never know. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And we'll see you in the next one.